Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. This is a meeting of the California Agricultural Land Equity Task Force, Sustaining Natural and Cultural Resources Subcommittee. It's our first subcommittee meeting, recently established at their last May 9th meeting. My name is Megan Wiley. I'm with California State University, Sacramento. I'll be providing facilitation support. Um, thank you folks for joining. We are recording the session. Um, let me quickly uh, call roll to establish quorum and then we'll run through um, Zoom procedures and do a quick agenda review. So Vice Chair Emily, Emily Bergenio. Do we hear present? I think Emily was unmuting. Emily is here. Yeah, present. Wonderful. Member Lawrence Harlan. Present. Fabulous. We have established quorum. There's a third member of the subcommittee, member Darlene Franco, who may be able to join us later. And if so, we'll announce that for the record. Participation guidelines, same as always. Um, we're here to share ideas, listen to one another, learn from each other. All ideas and points of view have value. We'll treat each other respectfully. That goes for everyone participating today, including staff support members, members of the public, um, and stay on point. So today we're talking about sustaining natural and cultural resources underneath the umbrella of the task force goals, which we'll review in a moment. If you're joining us on Zoom and you would like to make a public comment, same process for all of our meetings, um, we have an online public comment form. It's available at sgc.ca.gov backslash meetings hyphen events. And we will ask you to do a separate form for each agenda item. Today, we have only two primary agenda sessions, so pretty easy. Um, and when it comes time, we will keep a discussion queue and we'll ask you to listen for your name and then pop up your hand on Zoom so you're easily identifiable for us. And then we'll unmute your microphone and then um, ask you to share your comment. We'll see how many folks are interested in that. And we have an approximate two minute time limit on public comments. Um, Zoom tips, everyone is muted upon entry. You'll get a little notification to ask you to unmute yourself when it's time to speak. This is for attendees, um, everyone who is a panelist, which is staff support, and of course, our subcommittee members, uh, you can mute and unmute yourself as well at will. And um, your raise hand feature is at the bottom of your Zoom panel. Just as a friendly reminder, we do have the Q&A function available to us today, and we'll only be using the Q&A for technical support needs only. We do not have chat. Any comments shared in Q&A, we'll ask you to fill out a public comment form and then come and read them for the record during the public comment process. Okay, um, before I do a gender review, I just wanted to also share, we have staff support with us joining on Zoom. We've got in the room um, at Strategic Growth Council, Sean Kennedy and Camille Frazier. And then um, at her office at home, Tessa Salzman. Our plan for today. It really is a working session. We'll be able to spend about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes together, really um, identifying the goals of the Sustaining Natural and Cultural Resources Subcommittee. So first we'll start with that discussion. What do you want to accomplish as a subcommittee, both in the short-term, mid-term, long-term? We had some conversations as a full task force, of course, at our meeting in May and our meeting in February, and some ideas percolated that we think fit nicely um, within this topic. And so we'll bring that list up for your consideration as a starting point for conversation and talk about them. Explore each one. Consider what questions you have regarding this idea. Is it still feel like a priority for you? How do we connect this idea to the broader issue of land access and land equity and the goals of the task force? And then if it's feeling like a priority idea, what are the next steps to advancing that idea? Towards the end of the working session, we'll pause, we'll summarize discussions, we will revisit the goals and see if they're still resonating. And of course, we'll review action items and next steps. And then before we close out, we'll like to speak with Emily and Lawrence about a meeting schedule and a time frame for the next meeting. Make sure we get something in the works there. 
we'll reserve about 15 minutes of the end, towards the end for public comments as well. So that's the plan. Okay, here we go, working session. <clears throat> Just as a refresher, we know that we've shown this a couple of times, but to help frame the focus of the different subcommittees and our conversations today, the goal of the task force as a whole is to develop recommendations on how to equitably increase land access to agricultural land for food production and traditional tribal agricultural uses. The task force is working to develop a report that will be submitted to the legislature on or before January 1st, 2026. The report will include policy recommendations on how to address this issue of ag land equity. So just let's hold that in our minds as we talk through our ideas today. With that, let's start with a conversation on subcommittee goals. So the first one, uh, because it is relatively obvious, um, we had suggested for all subcommittees is the work of the subcommittees really feeds up to the work of the overall task force. Here, we're starting to consider ideas that could be maybe um, considered for recommendations in that recommendations report related to sustaining natural and cultural resources and land access. Um, pardon me while I escape out of this form of PowerPoints and I'm just going to reshare the slide deck, but I'm gonna take some notes real time here as we talk through this. So let me pause, um, Emily, Lawrence, what are your thoughts on these goals? Well, I believe I was the one who recommended this topic of discussion or uh, to identify a subcommittee to highlight the need for protection of natural and cultural resources, um, even, you know, how they are interrelated or almost the same thing, the natural re resources um, and the cultural resources, because these aren't just factors or things, they're relatives, the waterways, the soil or earth, um, we have words for these in our language. They're intertwined, you know, within our creation stories, within um, within our traditional languages um, and our song cycles, and even um, our our create the creation with the with the stars, the the constellations. So, um, I wanted to highlight this because it is interrelated to the work with within agricultural community because it takes those resources um, to do the work. Um, but it's not in the most equitable way. It's not in the most sustainable way, as we all know. Um, so yeah, I was, hoping that we would get more, if you notice all three of the subcommittee members, they are the tribal reps from the task force. And I was hoping there would be more uh, uh, folks being willing to join too, um, to get those perspectives as well. But we'll get there and um, my goal is to highlight like the laws, the actual laws that are in place here within the state of California um, that, you know, and there's more that I'm unaware of, right? But the ones that are, I'm more familiar with are NAGPRA and CEQA. And um, there's probably a few more that I should have offhand that I, that I don't have right now, but those are the two main ones that I can think of that um, we here in Kumi Island implement on a daily basis. And um, it is very much uh, 
relevant to the the work within agriculture. So I'll pause there. Um, there's a few more goals um, such as, yeah, like making those uh, recommendations to, um, to, I don't know, I don't know if the right language would be accept or just, um, but the cultural traditional practices within, you know, the land stewardship or traditional ecological knowledge, as some refer to it, um, how we can uh, highlight that, how we can uplift that work, such as cultural burning, such as um, traditional uh, fisheries, um, which are sustainable, such as, you know, water, um, uh, re, what is it called? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh oh water restoration work excuse me as we all know that is a major factor here in california too but that traditional practice of um water uh, uh restoration and yeah how when we're talking land access um how we can re recommend the, what is that term? Uh, Lawrence might be more, or you, Megan, uh, the, re the right of first refusal, something like that, when it comes to land back or land um, access and highlighting, yeah, land back is different than land acquisition land back is actually getting the land back it being returned um in a in a in a good way like that but uh land acquisition is when the tribe or the band um has to buy the land back so those are just some things offhand um off off head anyways but i have a little bit more and i'll pop Thanks. Lawrence, um, feel free just to unmute yourself and dive in and engage in a, in a dialogue. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have nothing to add. I agree with all of these goals. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I'm just taking some shorthand notes. Of course, it's not perfected. The language is not perfected, but at least we're capturing ideas. We can turn yeah. back to these goals as we carry on through. Um, and some of them might, you know, I, th you, I think you brought up some ideas, Emily, that fit nicely under um, some of the topics that were elevated during the May meeting. So do we feel comfortable to move past the goals and then kind of look, move to the next portion of the working session to review those ideas? And we can kind of cycle through and really think about like the relationship between natural and cultural resources, land access and equity, what you really want that to look like, what's your end goal and how do you get there? Does that feel good? Yeah, in your second bullet point, can put at the end, including water restoration and cultural burning. Mm -hmm. Oh, the second one. Oh, this one's right. Yeah. Including water restoration, including water and culture yeah great and i always say too like it's better to understand the issue than focusing on the problem right so understanding the systems that created these barriers the inequity the the how california tribes haven't had access to a lot of and not it's not isolated to just California tribes, but we are just talking, you know, with this task force, it is specific to the state of California. But uh, how tri tribal nations throughout the country have been um, discriminated against within, you know, USDA and other opportunities as well, like discrimination as well. But I know this doesn't 
it, it does fall under actually um what we're talking but it there's yeah that's it's just a bigger conversation um to understand those barriers and because if you don't understand it then you can't really i mean you could put a band-aid on it but you have to understand the issue and the systematic right um workings mm -hmm. that you know it's not that i'm it's not that <clears throat> like this task force was created due to inequity, right? So it's not a coincidence that we're just here talking. It's because of these things, right? And we have to not necessarily focus on that, but we have to understand it is what I'm trying to say. Great. Um, I think that flows nicely into the next portion of the of the morning, which really is this working session. Here's our proposed process. We're gonna show you a list of ideas and topics that folks have mentioned at prior meetings. And then we're gonna talk about each one. We'll ask you, Emily, and ask you, Lawrence, which ones rise to the top for you. We don't need to discuss them in any particular order, but we'll just hold these questions in our mind as we look at the list of ideas what information is needed to further explore this subtopic connected back to what you were just saying, Emily, how do we really understand that issue or idea? What remaining questions do you have about that? Does the idea topic lend itself maybe to a recommendation? Do you see it maybe fitting in that recommendations report that the task force is developing? We don't need to answer all these questions right now. We just kind of want to hold them in our minds as we look at these ideas. And then um, if you like, and it feels right, we'll have conversations about what are the next steps to advance each idea if you want. So I'm about to show you um, a list. Oh, well, my animation doesn't work here <laughs> because I'm in notes mode. So I was going to say, I'm about to walk you through a list A through F, but here they all are on screen. So we um, took the notes from the May meeting and we did a little bit of synthesizing and we pulled out the ones, staff support pulled out the ones that we thought fit within this topic of sustaining natural and cultural resources. So let's just review each one if you'll, if you'll humor me for a second. Um, and we can always finesse language here, but you know, just to get the concepts across. Topic A, protection of sacred sites, human remains and cultural artifacts during development. Topic B, Acknowledgement of history of land, especially during land transfer. C, legal framework that supports California Native American land management practices. D, honoring sacred sites. E, respect for California Native American tribal lands and land management practices, such as cultural fires. And then F, perhaps you have other ideas that we want to add to this list related to water supply and conservation, habitat preservation, rela human relationships with land and stewarding land. So the idea here is, if it makes sense and it works for us, is Emily Lawrence, you tell us where you want to go. Like, which of these ideas do you want to start diving into first. And I have another couple of slides queued up so I can take real time notes underneath each of these topics. Um, Lawrence, um, answer you, cause I have just one more thing to add. The, and maybe it just falls under legal framework but the um, like highlighting the consultation process, um, like the the government to government required consultation. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming it would fall under. Because how you were asking us during the last um, slide about what our goals would be, or, or maybe it's yeah, this slide you can include it. I don't, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to mention, yeah, that required consultation process because it does relate to 
um, the topic at hand with this subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lawrence, how are you feeling about this list? Yeah, I, I think it looks good. Okay. Groovy, which one should we start to unpack first? with a it doesn't start with a okay you're driving so we can go wherever you all want to go so here's the slide here's topic a protection of sacred sites human remains and cultural artifacts during development and a shorthand of those questions that we were just considering what information do you need here to help expand this idea what questions do you have and if you want to advance this idea and you could see it developing into some form of recommendation for the task force report, um, what are those next steps? And just, you know, as a reminder, we're going to connect, seek to connect this to land access, land equity. So if we look at this from a different lens um, and we're thinking like what's working well and what's not working related to the protection of sacred sites and cultural artifacts during developments, not just not when I, when we use the word development, it kind of makes me think of structural development, but we're talking about agricultural development here, right? So I think at a prior meeting, we talked about when there's turnover and some, some of the space is already developed or maybe folks are expanding their footprint to increase some of their agricultural land. Um, what, what do you all want to accomplish as a task force in terms of ensuring that there's protection of sacred sites and cultural artifacts and human remains during development? How would this Kind of connect to what you would want to tell the legislature and the and the governor something working well that we could kind of replicate the process is something not working well that you would want to address and kind of reshape and reform if given the opportunity well <clears throat> isn't most ag land like private land I think so. I'm not the expert on that one. I mean, and Tessa and Camille and Sean, if you have information, please feel free to share. Yeah, I believe the, the grand majority of Agron is private land. Which I'm not the expert, like you said, Megan. <laughs> Neither am I. Um, I don't think NAGPA, like you can at and again, I could be wrong, but I don't think you can implement NAGPRA on private land or it's just harder to implement the protection of cultural um, artifacts or items on somebody's private land. So my recommendation, yeah, would be um, if if it is, you know, again, I would have to ask more, I know a few more people uh, very much more versed in NAGPRA, um, so I'll have to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. But how can we, yeah, implement the protection of, of, I see your hands up. I don't know if that's Camille or Sean. Yeah, so I didn't mean to cut you off there, Emily. 
Um, yeah, I, th I think what you're bringing up is a really important point. And I would say I also don't, un don't understand the complexities of the law and where it applies and where it does not, but there are protections that do apply to private land. And I would recommend um, in the briefing materials, there is a link there that goes to a series of videos um, that are training videos for tribes about what laws exist that you can leverage to protect human remains, sacred sites. Um, and that I was watching those videos because I was learning a lot. And again, I don't, Emily, I think your question is a really important one. Um, and one that I feel like I can't like speak to or answer fully, but um, I would recommend that as a resource for maybe re looking at watching those videos and then seeing what in there might be elevated as part of the recommendation, right? So relying on the existing legal frameworks, we could do a bit more, right? Looking into that and how might that be relevant to the agricultural context? Um, so I can make sure that that link gets shared out um, in fact, I could even look for it right now and stick it in the chat if that's helpful just for you to store aside um, sure. for future review, review. Okay, I'll make sure to do that. Yeah, um, that's good to get more familiar. Um, my my point is more towards like, how do we implement it? Because yeah, these laws are made, right? But sometimes they're not implemented or followed. Um, Cal NAGPRA being one as well, um, which is more focused on the academic institutions, not in ag. So I won't get into it, but it was designed or made to, yeah, protect our cultural patrimony or items, artifacts, to get them returned from museums, from universities, institutions. Um, but what is that? process really look like and how is it being implemented and is it even being implemented and respected so that was my my what I'm more leaning towards um I do need to get more familiar so I'm open to that video for sure and yeah when I was talking before about like these natural and cultural resources pretty much being the same thing to tribal California tribal nations like we don't separate ourselves from the natural world um or that's not how we were you know before colonization um so we do identify with the water and the earth the soil that is used for ag the water used for ag, the waterways. Um, and, you know, it is a, these factors are throughout the state from North, Central and South, but there's, you know, different experiences. <clears throat> I know in the North, they have a lot of uh, cannabis farming. In the, the Central, they have a lot of ag, like produce ag anyway. And down here in, this, in the South, the same, a lot of, um, ag as well but um and water is always you know a factor and um it's it's uh yeah I don't know I'll just pause there sorry I wanted to jump in really quick I forgot we don't have a chat function in a webinar so I can't put that link there but I will I will follow up with that um that link to those videos just wanted to Ping that, and it is in the briefing materials, which are public for anyone else who would be listening in. Um, you'll see that link in the briefing materials. Lawrence, you have any um, thoughts on this one? No. Okay. We don't really. Um highlight too often, which I can't really speak on either, is, you know, tradition, because how you mentioned in the be the beginning of your slides, the um, goals and the recommendations of um, to in equitably increase access to ag, 
lands for um, brew production and traditional tribal uses. So um, that would be along the coast as well. For us it, on Kumeyaay land, the coast was our home, but we were pushed more inland. So we've been separated for, from our homelands along the coast, um, which then, you know, diminishes those coastal marine traditional practices within our nation, within our livelihoods, because when you separate um, us from the natural ecosystem, I know we refer to them as like sites, village sites or sacred sites, but really they're entire ecosystems that we functioned in, in a good way, right? And contributed to as well. Um, when you remove us from that, you know, not only does it affect that natural ecosystem, but it affects our cultural um, practices as well. So um, we're actively revitalizing our fishing, um, our tule boat making, and uh, that's just something we have to deal with down here is the protection of our village sites along the coast as well for the past 30 years um, in the active like law a uh, suit battle to protect our village sites that we won but anyway um that's something i wanted to highlight because we're always thinking ag you know growing in crops but there's also the for our practices traditional ag you know it's also including the hunting the fishing it, it includes uh the harvesting of the plant medicines and the active land stewardship. So that's why I bring it, <laughs> I say all this. Uh, that's why I highlight cultural burning because it's our traditional agricultural practices. Um, I'm wondering if we want to pop down to item E, which identified cultural burns as an example. Lawrence, did you want to pop in? Are you, are you connected with your mic? You're good. I see some weird activity going on in the panelists, so I want to make sure that you're still connected. Um, if we look at item E, I know that this one is is very important and dear to you, Emily. Um, we've talked about it a couple of times, but maybe we can spend a few minutes or you know some minutes exploring this one. Um, if you're feeling, if the general sentiment is that it's it's been very challenging across the state to get acceptance for cultural burns and things like that, then um, and this is an opportunity to start to address that in some fashion, some form via your recommendations. Kind of what what would be your vision? You know, if you're thinking about this as an opportunity, like what what would you like that to look like if there is an end goal to um, have more permissible use of you know, cultural burning and, and protection of traditional ecological uses and things like that. Can we explore it from that lens? Well, it's really when it come when it, we could talk about all the factors, but really when it comes down to it, it's implementing tribal sovereignty. And cultural burning is the only, from what I'm, you know, there's um, other factors that I'm maybe unaware of, but from in my homelands, the only um, cultural practice that we need that certification for is burning, cultural burning or cultural fire, whatever you want to <laughs> refer to it as. Um, <clears throat> like we don't need to be certified to sing our songs, to speak our language, to go and you know steward the land harvest the medicine but when it comes to cultural burning um the government has their yeah their uh, their yeah their requirements and um their views even um 
on how we do it. So that was, that was just what I wanted to share. It really comes down to implementing tribal sovereignty. Um, if I wanted to do a cultural burn right now, I wouldn't, I would be fined. I would probably maybe even be arrested right now because of it's July, you know, and, and it's pretty dry, but the government or Cal fire or whoever the agency at hand may be, doesn't respect cultural knowledge, cultural science, traditional cultural science enough to, um, you know, a, cult, a cultural fire practitioner to implement their, tri their tribal sovereignty to do a burn in July. They would, they will and have arrested uh, tribal members here in the Kumeyaay Nation um, for doing that because it wasn't, he's, they weren't certified and uh, you have to have a burn permit, you know, it de depending on what land, you know, status, whether it's federal, pub, uh, private, um, there's different requirements in how you can do a burn, um, whether it's a burn permit, however that looks through whichever agency um, you have to acquire that from. So when I say tribal sovereignty, when it comes down to tribe to implementing tribal sovereignty, you have to go through all these channels and that's the government having us by, yeah, the neck still to practice our culture when really we should just be able to go out there, but it's done, it's looked at in a negative way, a way that it's like, the perspective is we're careless when really that's a, that's a ceremony. That's a cultural practice. So I'll just pause there. <laughs> okay. Um, so how do we, how would you like to address this? Do you have any ideas? You've been thinking about this for a while. Like what would kind of be your, your idea, your pathway forward? We can brainstorm. I mean, I've advocated on Capitol Hill before about cultural burning. I've advocated to Cal Fire about ca cultural burning. So these things are I've already done. Um, I guess keep doing them. <laughs> so, so let's think about like what this could look like if it's embedded in a comprehensive recommendations, like suite of recommendations that the task force delivers to the governor or the legislature. What might this look like? Is this kind of a, a chapter that discusses the issue of prevention of cultural burning during times when when um, Native American tribes feel like it's appropriate and necessary, but they're but it's kind of being roadblocked because there's many requirements for permits and licenses, especially depending on if you're on state lands or federal lands. Please correct me along the way here too, and I'm just gonna you know say this a few times, right? Because I'm not the expert, and I'm just working to kind of hear the important bits and summarize and and find a pathway forward. Um, what are some opportunities to begin to address that? And Camille, does it do you have a, a um, something to add? Go ahead. Jeff. Yeah, we. Um, yeah, thanks, Mike. I was just I think part of what we're trying to understand in order to provide support to this subcommittee is, you know, are there information gaps and like what you just said, Emily? There's you know approaches that you can employ to advocate for change, but. What can we be providing in terms of support? Is would it be helpful to have examples from other states, for example, of where cultural burns have been treated differently? Is there other sort of you know research, other things that we can be providing that can help then inform what a change might look like that would be headed in the direction of what you're describing here? So that's you know what we're really listening for in this conversation today is what you need from us you know, what you know, what you don't know, what you would like to see, and then what we can be doing to, to support that. Which then gets to where Megan is talking about, okay, once we have that and we've built out, you know, this, this in a little more detail, 
then we start thinking about, okay, what does that look like in terms of a recommendation for a specific change in my promise? Kelsa, you have an idea? Well, I think kind of just adding to what Sean said and another way to to continue exploring this would be even just to ask you, Emily, what were those asks that you've made in the past? Um, and maybe just even starting from there. And Lawrence, of course. Your mic is a tiny bit garbly for some reason all of a sudden, Tessa, but um, I believe you were saying another way, another lens to think about this is what were the asks that you've made perhaps on the Hill before in the past, if you've done some advocacy work um, and were they successful? Where did, where did they get you? And um, if not, how can this process maybe support that? So yeah, the Native Farm Bill Coalition organized uh, different tribal nation representatives to come out and advocate on Capitol Hill um, to their, you know, delegated representatives, of course. So I met with um, different heads of office and their staff as well, because some weren't available. Um, they're on Capitol Hill with two other uh, California tribal reps, or no, three, excuse me, three other California tribal representatives. So they had, um, and one being a, a former chairman, and at the time he was the chairman. So um, got to hear, you know, from them as well. But I, yeah, just highlighted the, what I'm, I'm, I highlighted pretty much what I just said, <laughs> which was the importance to implement tribal sovereignty. Um, and the connection of our science and our uh, within the cultural um, practices, um, the criminalization that's happened uh, throughout the statehood of of California, you know, um, prop and within the development um, of the statehood of California. And how that continues to this day, how tribal members are being criminalized for the cultural practices of land stewardship, um, whether it's the fisheries or the cultural burning. Um, yeah, those were some of the things I brought up. I also spoke with the on a panel to Cal Fire directly back a few months ago here on Kumi Island, they held the uh, wildfire and force resiliency task force through the state. And they held a panel that was focused on cultural burning and it's online, the panel. So I can share that with you guys if you wanna watch it. Um, I sat on a panel with different tribal representatives of uh, some of them being, you know, working within the agency, uh, the agencies, the state agencies, and some of them being cultural practitioners. And um, so I highlighted to the top dog of Cal Fire who was, who's on that task force. I can't, his name is slipping my mind right now. Um, the what I just mentioned, the importance of, yeah, implementing tribal sovereignty and so forth. And so I've I've advocated dir directly to Cal Fire. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much where it, it I mean, you know, on on their end anyways, that's pretty much where it stood. It didn't move any further than there. And um, of course I keep doing that advocacy work uh, within 
the county government within different tribal governments, but um, that's pretty much with those two, that's where it stands. Okay. So, okay. Oh, did you want to jump in, Sean or Camille? It's just really quick. It, it sounds like, thank you for that, Emily. It sounds like an important discussion. I appreciate you sharing that video. It sounds like it'd be really important for us all to learn from. And it sounds to me like what partly, at least what you're describing is if you think about the statute for the task force and equitably increasing access to land for traditional tribal agricultural uses, you're describing that that access to land is is like one piece, but unless tribal sovereignty is respected and implemented, that access to land doesn't then guarantee traditional tribal agricultural uses. So am I kind of capturing like how you're seeing those ideas connected? Pretty much. So now you're part of this task force. The task force is developing a recommendations report that should have some weight behind it. And you've got a team of folks here helping you um, and can support that. What can we do? Like, what does this look like? Does this, does this, if we're thinking about next steps on this, does this look like we work on the back end and prepare a couple of paragraphs describing the issue and then possibly some ideas for breaking through this issue? Um, or do you, I don't know, I'm, I'm still a little stuck here because I want us to figure out like, how do we get there? Okay, so we, we're getting a little bit more clarity on you know this particular subtopic, what we want it to look like, where we want it to go, how do we get there? You got a team of folks at your disposal. What can we do? So I, I was dropping off, uh, but uh, I'm sorry for that. But uh, for this bullet here, um, E, respect for lands and uh, land management practices, I think uh, what you could help with the task force would be maps. If we're talking about lands, like I'd like to see mapping of the uh the tribal lands and um, not only just political maps, but even like we're talking about um, the just the non-native uh, kind of an overlap who's managing um, the way I see it. All of it is tribal California native tribal lands, but I like to see now who's kind of um, overtaking that or in, in terms of private federal state um, entities. Because it's going to be, you know, then then we can get a sense of because each region is going to have different um, landowners, and it's all kind of encroaching or it's all overlapping California native tribal lands. Um, so mapping would be great, a great resource as far as polit political and jurisdiction over these lands, um, our ancestral lands. But then also, uh, I'd like to see some uh, research on, you know, we're just talking about cultural burning and criminalization of that. What are those? How many convictions um, are on the books? And uh, yeah, and so what's what's the data on that? Who's been convicted and charged, harassed? So... So that goes back to like law enforcement, whether it's uh, county, city, or if it's um, BLM, or I don't know if Cal Fire have has a law enforcement wing. But the other thing would kind of get a feedback from um, these agencies, the top. What is their take on um, burning, for example? Do they do they train? And maybe you know, what's the idea of maybe if can they use some of these practices uh what yeah what's the data on on this also if you want to because if we're going to have to convince non-natives um of the effectiveness of cultural burning they're going to want to see science behind that and, re and research 
So, and and I've seen, I've just seen like an, anecdotal evidence of uh, fires, the impact that it has when burning has been uh, used and then when it has not been used. And it seems to be um, more advantageous for the land if it's, there's a fire, there's less damage if it's on lands that have been treated with cultural burning. So more of that and, you know, mm -hmm. can Cal Fire and state government, federal, private landowners, can they use these um, cultural practices uh, that the tribes have been using? So there was a lot there. Sorry. That was really good stuff, um, Lawrence. The kind of you just started, I think, to go down. Uh, well, my my wheels started spinning slowly in my brain. But, you know, we could take a look at this and see how far we get um, and see see what's already out there in terms of, you know, doing some research on the criminalization of cultural burning, pulling some maps together. Um, depending on, you know, kind of staff resources and availability, this is maybe stuff that folks could do right now, or it could actually take the form of a recommendation that, um, you know, the state, you know, I don't know, host a summit on cultural burning or invest in science and research on the effects of cultural burning in order to start to garner support from state and federal agencies and or, you know, more broadly implement, um, you know, prescribed burns, cultural burns. Oh, we just lost Lawrence again. He must have spotty internet connection. Um, so I, I think this is more of the, you know, this is kind of exciting. Is this kind of the direction we're hoping to go here? And even to the extent of um, recommending, yeah, they, cause I've been, I've heard from another relative, a cultural practitioner um, that Cal Fire, they don't have any training requirements for cultural burning. Um, they of course have the uh, required field, um, <clears throat> certifications, all that, but there's no training where they learn about, you know, the traditional practices of, of fire um, here in the state of California anyway. And just recently, uh, there's been some efforts doing like workshops. It's not necessarily a training. It's more of a day workshop where presenters uh panels present to the attendees and it's put on by cal fire um and it was yeah called the cultural fire workshop or something i can't remember now but i participated on the panel they asked me to speak so i've i've spoke i've presented to cal fire you know multiple times now actually in in different settings and um, and it's just dialogue. So yeah, making that recommendation for actual, how you said they to have a training for them to understand our science, our practices and the history even, um, so that the criminalization, uh, factor that we are experiencing here, um, can lessen, can, it can be less of a factor. Right. Good. Um, may I check in with uh, SGC staff support? How are you feeling about this? Questions, thoughts? Are you getting what you need from Emily and Lawrence? We'll be back on in a moment. This is really helpful. I appreciate the, the detail. I think from our side as well, it's one starting to identify what recommendations could be, but also what we need to bolster those recommendations to make them as strong as possible. And so building that out with some of that, um, you know, some of those research components and, and other things that Lawrence had mentioned as well, um, certainly gives us clear direction as to what support we can provide to, to do that. So um, yeah, this is uh, encouraging to see. 
Cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be an iterative process, of course. Where you start to work on something, come back, take a look, figure out where you want to bolster it. If you want to maybe make some tweaks, corrections, change direction. Cool. Um, should we move on to another subtopic, Emily? What do you think? We, can we move forward if we don't have a quorum? Um, I will just really quickly add there. So I received confirmation from legal that we can have discussions without quorum. We just cannot take action. So I believe, Emily, you could continue that discussion until Lawrence can join us again. Lawrence did text me. He might be a few minutes. So up to you. Do you want to take a pause and wait for Lawrence to return? Or Emily, did you want to start to look at another one together? Sure, go ahead. Which one sounds interesting? Um, actually, I'm going to pop back up to your goals here. Um, so legal framework, maybe we go to that one next. Um, we had some conversation around elevating traditional cultural uses and traditional ecological knowledge within the framework, um, water restoration and cultural burning. So we didn't talk much yet about water restoration, um, but I know legal framework and connection to water preservation, water restoration was on here too. Where do we wanna go? I'm good with just going in order. Okay. Um, maybe now that we've got a little warm up lap under our belts, if we would take a quick peek at A again, a quick revisit, protection of sacred sites, human remains and cultural artifacts during development. Um, possible next steps is the videos, reviewing the videos in the briefing packet, determining which which might be elevated. Is that, is there anything else that we want to identify as a next step for this one? Um, well, the only familiar, cause how I did mention the coastal regions. Um, no, no, that's fine for now. Okay, fine for now. Then item B, acknowledgement of history of land, especially during land transfer. What does this mean for you? What's your vision of this one? How can the work of the task force support this? Well, like Lawrence mentioned before, it's all stolen California tribal land, Where, wherever, you know, agriculture land is here in the state of California. Emily, can I ask whether this is a place to think a little bit about um, tribal consultation? Um, you'd mentioned, I believe, earlier um, the requirement, right, for nation to nation conversations, right? Um, and so I don't know if this is a place where we could think a bit more about what that would look like notification, consultation, the legal requirements for that. Yeah. Do you want to expand on that thought, Camille or Emily or? Uh, well, I know, you know, relatively little about this, but I, from the context of Salk, I've been sitting on the Salk committee um, and they're in the process of revising guidelines um, that will consider tribal consultation um, 
as a critical framework for that grant program. So I'm just wondering whether there are recommendations that it could come from this subcommittee, it could come from other places, but whether the task force is interested in taking up that issue related to the transfer of land and nation to nation consultation um, in that process. Maybe that didn't give any more context, but maybe right now there's nothing more to say about that, but I know it, I just wanted to kind of, uh, I think Emily, you had mentioned that earlier and wanted to, and maybe Lawrence too would have some thoughts on this. So we can just set that aside for now. That's the Sustainable Agricultural Land Conservation Program, oh. SALC. Apologies. Yeah, it's, yeah, Sustainable Agricultural Lands Conservation Program, SALC. And it's not an institute. It's a program run by DOC and SGC. Thank you. I think that's you know, sort of what Camille is saying, too. You know, this is, again, one example of a pathway to get somewhere, but to still be using this discussion, Emily, to, to hear from you about what you want to see, sort of what is the current state of things? What is a more ideal future look like? And then the recommendations become the pathway to, to getting there. So I'm really curious to hear from you what, what you would like to see in this space. Well, with the different land transfers, the different opportunities that I've learned about here in my homelands, there's always um, stipulations when it comes to the California tribes. Um, so for example, one of the local um, land, con the tribal land conservation groups was able to get a, <clears throat> a parcel of land, including water, you know, ways. Um, but there's the, that an easement on it, you know, which it's all beneficial, right? Um, but there's these stipulations that you can't develop or build on, on this land. when um, they were able to, to get that. And even within Salk, this is a factor. Um, I've, I've experienced this with trying to get my tribe interested or my tribal council interested in applying for it. Um, once they learned about the stipulation of Salk having, um, you know, requirements that tribes aren't allowed to, uh, develop or build on the lands they're requesting. Um, they were uninterested because uh, that's, you know, infringing on our sovereignty and our way of, you know, um, doing things on the land. So we weren't, so we wouldn't be able to build, you know, food preservation, um, structures or or traditional structures anyway so yeah these are some factors when it comes to land transfer these stipulations um does that addressing stipulations as related to land transfer um can we maybe build that in i don't know What do we think about this one? We could marinate on it for a little bit.
ค่ะเดี๋ยวสิ legal framework um I, there's common threads between a couple of these sub bullets so maybe you know we're going to start to talk through them and then make some connections or you know rework rework some of the ideas or the subtopics but let's think about this one um legal framework that supports california native american land management practices so we talked about highlighting um implementing enforcing sequa nipa things like that. And instituting government to government consultation processes, or maybe possibly addressing those guidelines or requirements. What do we want? What, what do we want to say here? I'm also feeling like this one is connected to the conversation we were just having about cultural burning as well. I guess even to start maybe by trying to understand a little more about what this means is a that there is a need for a legal framework that supports California Native American land management practices or is there issues with the current framework? What would an ideal framework look like? Uh, you know, how is the current legal framework impeding um, California Native American land management practices? And just, I don't know, it could sort of be interpreted in different ways. And again, Emily Lawrence like it to me. I guess the other thing to, or is this something that sits sort of above a lot of what we've been talking about that, you know, we talked specifically about cultural burning before and kind of the, you know, legal structures that uh, prevent that from being able to be practiced, but that's one issue. And are we now then talking about this broader legal framework in the different ways that they support or do not support? Uh, the question of sovereignty, I guess, right, which does keep coming up and practicing sovereignty might mean cultural fire, but it would mean different things, different contexts. So one thing that comes to mind um, in this would be treaty rights or lack of treaty rights that I think the task force should um, revisit. And I'm not an expert on that. I know I know only one tribal nation in California off the top of my head that has a treaty right treaty ratified by Congress. So I think the task force should take a look at that. Just treaty treaty rights of uh, treaties for California native tribes. And see how that fits fits or doesn't fit into uh, the legal framework. Okay.
at risk of being repetitive. I'm going to do it anyway. Well, we really only have a year and a half together on this, and this is a pretty tremendous opportunity to build this report to deliver to the governor's office and the legislature. What do we want in there? If you've got a chance, you've got you've got them as an audience. You've got a lot of credibility because you're uh, an appointed, a legislatively appointed task force. You're experts. Um, you have a lot of experience. So, you know, this is a pretty impressive audience. If you have a chance to make a statement, to give them a recommendation, and we're thinking about recommendations related to sustaining natural and cultural resources within this framework of land access and land equity. You know, what do we want to unpack? What do we want to redesign? What, you know, what laws, what legislation, what programs would you might want to develop or implement? What kind of education campaigns, things like that. If you think about it like that, like, hey, you know, we're going to draft this thing. People are going to read it. It's going to, you know, hopefully pack a punch. It's going to maybe, you know, cause some major shifts, major changes, groundswell. Um, you know, where do we want to go? Like, let's just keep thinking about it like that. Let's try some things on for size. If we had a whole chapter, we had a whole chapter in the recommendations report that was sustaining natural and cultural resources. What are off, you know, just kind of gut check, initial thoughts, like what are the components that you would want to include there? Anything that we haven't yet talked about? The everything we talked about already. <laughs> everything we talked about already. Mm -hmm. It would be land back for sure. Land back. I'm gonna add it right here. Can I ask a quick follow-up question just to that, Emily? I think we had spoken earlier about the kinds of stipulations that can come with various forms of easements and things like that. So within the land back movement, are there recommendations that you would want the governor and the legislature to know related to what it means sort of what Megan was just saying, like if you could design an ideal situation for returning lands to California Native American nations for food production, right? For tribal uses, what would those, uh, how to do stipulation, right? The, the, I think just trying to think through the ideal um, forms that you'd like to put out there and then we can kind of back up and see what would be the recommendations to get closer and maybe even achieve those ideals. Maybe that didn't make sense, but I was tying those conversations together. I know we're kind of pushing our thoughts, our thought process and our work process here. Um, it's pretty rare that we get some time together. We don't, you know, if, if we're kind of stuck and we need 
to take a moment and we need a little brain space or we feel like we've gotten as far as we can today, then that's great. Then, you know, we did, we did unpack a couple of things and we have some direction here. We could continue to do a little research, maybe put some ideas together for you all to consider. Um, but I don't want to necessarily stop the meeting a little early um, if we feel like there's a little bit more that we can extract here, you know? Maybe it's tough because we don't we don't have a framework for what the recommendations report is going to look like. We just, you know, we looked at some examples early on back in October and in February of what that might look like, but we're not actually working within an existing framework right now. And you're the first subcommittee to get together and the first subcommittee to start to talk about this. So, you know, perhaps we've got a little bit of molding to do, but I don't know, you all tell us. Emily, Lawrence, it's just us now. Um, we are recording, but it is just us for the moment. How, you know, what are you thinking of this conversation? What other ideas, thoughts, do you just want to get out there for us to capture, for us to marinate on, you know, maybe, you know, think about how we can maybe turn it into our recommendations or, or just like experiences and knowledge that you have that we could use later in the recommendations report to give foundation to other ideas that are in there. Um, well, there's a lot, there's a lot. So if you go back, I guess, to the first slide, these are all important, these are all important aspects in all the different bullets. Um, mm -hmm. but it all comes down. Yeah. I guess, I guess we're working on it, right. We're working on, I was, I was thinking overall, like, you know, Emily laid it out perfect how our ancestors viewed the land, the resources, um, the earth, the air, the fire. And now it's a man and you know, all that's been a lot of that. Most of it's been taken away and we're kind of rebuilding from a tribal perspective. We're, we're trying to return to that because there's been, um, we've been assimilated in you know, our, our, you know, our, our culture and our ways have been uh, almost destroyed. So now it's kind of a, a rebirth of that returning to uh, what our ancestors gave us. So, and now it's a matter of trying to put that on paper and kind of do it in, in the modern way uh, mm -hmm. and for lack of a better term, the, you know, the way of the white man. And that's what we're, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to put it in now. We're, you know, we're putting it into digital format, we're putting it into a PowerPoint, which is not what our ancestors had in mind. But uh, so I guess it's kind of from my, personally, it's learning, you know, we, we told you overall, you know, what we want. Emily laid it out quite clear. But how do we do that within the system? Mm -hmm. So I think we need feedback from the experts, um, Megan and Tessa and Camille, uh, on how to do that. You know, we laid out what we want, but how do we put that on paper and how do we make that policy? Mm -hmm. uh, so I come from a small community. I don't know how the... I'm not a uh, legislature. I'm not an uh, elected, you know, I don't work for the California state government. I don't know all of your agencies. So you tell me, how do we put this? What can we do? What recommendations would fit our goals um, mm -hmm. and the goals of our ancestors? So, and given the fact that, you know, a lot was taken away from us. So, how do we, and, and then I, you know, I acknowledge there's other citizens and um, I respect all the other citizens, U.S. citizens, California citizens, uh, migrants, but uh, we should, uh, you know, we're, we're dying people um, health wise and, uh, and, you know, agriculture is important. So there's, there's a lot of uh, diseases in, in our, in my community, I could speak for my community and 
you know, since I'm on this task force, I'll just take a look. I've been to other tribal communities too, and there's there's obesity, there's diabetes, and it's related to lack of uh, lack of uh, access to to our lands. I think so. Kind of pushing it back. I think we, I kind of pushing it back on 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 you and the rest of the task force. You know, let us know how this can work. What? How do we? How do we make it policy? I really appreciate that, Lawrence. I have some initial thoughts, but first, may I just see if my colleagues at Strategic Growth Council want to re reply? Uh, thank you, Lawrence. Yeah, I yeah really really appreciate that, and and that's I think what I've been trying to convey that we're here to provide that support. And what we you know we we can provide that support. We can help in the development of recommendations, help to navigate the system and, and things like that. But what we want to be clear on is what are those ultimate goals of where we're trying to get to. And just as you outlined then, and as Emily has been outlining as well, that has been helpful for us to, to do that. Um, but at the same time, I and we've been, I think, trying and maybe unsuccessfully from what you've said, but to, to not have what you're trying to do have to be packaged into a certain process from the from the get-go. And if there are an alternative ways that we can be viewing even how we're thinking through what recommendations should look like, how they should be packaged, how they should be presented, any of that, rather than putting the burden on you to conform to that idea, um, what we can be doing internally to sort of make well our process and what we're trying to do to support you more aligned with what you'd like to see. We're very, very more than happy to, to do that. So um, but appreciate the direction from you. And we certainly will take that on and do what we can to provide that support. So, again, I really appreciate the way that you articulated that. Um, Camille, Tessa, any thoughts on this? Just echo the appreciation, Emily and Lawrence, you've given us a lot um, today. And I think done a lot to highlight what you would like to see and some pathways there. So in addition, I think you've actually done some of that work and then encouraged, I, I appreciate that you're encouraging us also to use our positions and our knowledge to move that forward further. So I think to Sean's point, we're here as as support. So we'll take what you've said and come back to you um, with some some ideas and some ways forward. I mean, what what do you think, Emily? Too, I don't want. I, I think is that something you agree? I do you think we've kind of laid out the goal? Is it, what do you think as far as like if because Camille just said and like what Camille just said, kind of taking it back and and then coming back to the rest of the task force with with ideas. Is that is that sound good or what's your take? Yeah, I agree how you said it, Lawrence. Like what is we've had this dialogue, but really uh we also need to acknowledge what is even real is realistic because what we're doing is, yeah, just making recommendations. And I don't want to just say, like, use that word just, right, like lightly um, or heavily even, but these are just recommendations. And I'm not trying to minimize anybody's work, whether it's the task force or the, the SGC staff. Um, but it's not like a a for sure thing right but we will be shedding some light on what's needed so i'm i'm interested in knowing what's realistic what's um i know the california truth and healing process has been the governor's effort to gain some of the to gain some of that perspective or recommendations from california tribal nations there's just gaps, though, within that process. Um, 
And it also, yeah. So that's just one process that's already happening that I wanted to mention. Um, it's not too like uh, focused on agricultural community other than, you know, traditional agriculture. And these factors that we're talking about of cultural burning, they're not isolated to the reservation lands. Um, we want to practice like our homelands surpass any boundary that was given by the state of California or the government of California. Our homelands for Kumeyaay are the ocean, mountain, and desert, but you will only find us in the mountains in the high desert. Um, but we want to implement our tribal sovereignty beyond the reservation lands and, and beyond that reservation thinking too. Um, that, um, which is also like, yeah, founded in California mission slave system thinking. Um, and what, and that had an impact on the depletement of those cultural practices, such as fishing, such as hunting, such as traditional agricultural uh, land stewardship. Because when it comes to that, um, and I say it like that, you know, traditional agricultural, because I don't want it to be confused with the contemporary practices of row monocrop. Yeah. Um, we had, we had, and we still have food forests. Um, I don't use the word food desert because our homelands are within the desert, which you can find a lot of food, a lot of plant relatives. Um, that's cause we have that active relationship with that, those lands though. And we don't separate ourselves from the natural world, but yeah, just knowing what's realistic is good too. Mm -hmm. I agree with the uh, Lawrence. I'm also intrigued. I know Darlene's not here um, to see what she would mm -hmm. provide, you know, as her perspective, her experience and what she has to say as well. Mm -hmm. Can I try on an idea for next steps and see if it feels good? Um, with complete acknowledgement that Lawrence, what you said rang totally true. Like we're operating within kind of the confines of like our, our current modern structure here and working in PowerPoint in the digital age and things like that. So we will of course take any, um, ideas for other creative mechanisms, but for now, I'm thinking within the framework of developing a recommendations report. Doesn't mean it has to look like that, but this is this is where I'm going because this is my habit and this is what I'm used to. Um, I'm feeling like what I heard from you all is we need to, to prepare um, a basic um, description about how the ancestor, how your ancestors, how the California Native American people use the resource and what are traditional uses and have a description of like how we came to be in present day and the idea of healing and rebirth and returning to that space. And then as kind of some type of like introductory foundation setting, like we're setting the stage for this recommendations that are going to fall within this topic of sustaining natural and cultural resources. So we need to do some stage setting. Um, then take today's conversation and start to expand them, um, sit with them, think through them a little bit and start to prepare some, some write-ups. Like if, our, you know, we have these goals or you all have these goals, right? You're, you're the captains of the ship and we're the crew and we're, our job is to get the ship where you tell us you want to go. Okay. Um, so we'll try it on for size, start to really define some of these goals here and then do some research and, and for certain topics like, you know, cultural burn, I keep going back to that one because it's easier. 
um, there's more information there or the legal framework piece, there's some information there start to define what's available and then start to do some research, a little bit more research as to what's working well, what's not working, and then prepare some ideas. I'm like, you know, this could be something that turns itself into a recommendation. Um, this could be something where we want to dive a little deeper and have more conversation. So I think we have enough to at least start to describe the, it kind of the framing of this subcommittee, the relationship between natural and cultural resources and land access and equity, and to describe, at least begin to describe what you all wanted to look like, at least portions of it, you know, um, certain end goals. We need to bring that back to you, the two of you, plus Darlene, plus the task force, and, and you know, and check in and say, does this look right? How would you revise it? How would you change it? then start to collect some initial ideas beyond what we just discussed today on how how do we accomplish that how do we get there and really start to clarify that roadmap and that's going to i think start to take the shape of recommendations so that's a very very long-winded way of saying um i believe we have enough to at least put together an outline maybe of a chapter if you will um, that could be embedded in the recommendations report. Um, then maybe come back together as the subcommittee in a month, two months, maybe after our August meeting um, and have, you know, like roll up our sleeves and start to talk about the language that's in there and how does it feel to you? Do you want to add to that? Maybe we have some, we do some work on the in-between um, with you all as individuals and kind of work on that language and come together as a subcommittee and really, you know, work on it. <laughs> How does that feel? Sounds good. Okay. Yep, feels good. Great. Um, we did want to go back and revisit our goals. Let's just do that so we're thorough um, and make sure that we connected these key points that you all brought up in the beginning to the conversations we had throughout the morning. So highlighting laws that are in place. Yes, we had discussions around legal, legal framework making sure we highlight and elevate traditional cultural uses in TEK, um, including water, water restoration and cultural burning. Um, didn't have a lot of conversation on water restoration yet, but that doesn't mean we won't. Um, highlighting land back and right of first refusal. And then getting to really understanding the issues and the systems that created the, the barriers that we're working to address it in the first place. I personally am seeing that as part of a really essential part of the framing of this chapter, <laughs> calling it a chapter for now. Um, but um, yeah, we need to understand that so that we can figure out the best ways forward. Did anything change for you all, Lawrence or Emily, related to goals? Still resonating for now. You're not stopping me. I'm moving forward. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Um, I think most of the action items are on staff, with the exception of you both going back and taking a look at some of the videos that were shared in the briefing materials. And we can talk about them the next time we meet and we can um, relate those to any kind of the next iteration of draft narrative that we're pulling together. Um, last couple pieces of business here are figuring out how you all wanna report back to the task force when we come together on August 15th and 16th, because there'll be space on the agenda for the subcommittees to either give very brief report outs or lengthier report outs. So we wanted to see what y'all feel about that and then talk about what our, you know, what a next meeting might look like. 
in terms of schedule, in terms of timing. Any initial ideas there? Of what to report? Um, yeah, like if we did a report back uh, at the meeting on the 15th, um, who would want to do that? Do we want to, you know, are we thinking it, it could be like a five minute update or is there any particular thing? I mean, that you what would be, we, what would be, we, excuse me, what would we be reporting? Are we reporting? All we did was have a dialogue really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, cause I think that this subcommittee's conversation will probably look different than the other two subcommittees. Um, so if we can just report that back pretty simply, so we, you know, we talked about the list of ideas that we had we had curated over the last couple of meetings we added some thoughts to them um, we started to to really think through um issues like traditional ecological knowledge cultural uses um, cultural burning legal framework and the next step is staff is is starting to collect those ideas and at, maybe developing kind of an outline or like a little bit of a narrative framework for so for possible recommendations related to sustaining natural and cultural resources. Um, is there anything, anything that we talked about today that you would wanna bring up for full task force conversation right now? Or is that feeling premature? Well, I think, uh, I think like the mapping is important. Mapping? The maps of uh, mm -hmm. the all the different ancestral territories and what it what do we have to work with as a task force mm -hmm. as our recommendations? Like what I think that's important. What if we're going to identify if some of this involves real estate? Where is that located and what's available? Mm -hmm. And how does that overlap with uh, ancestral territories? Oops, sorry. I'm not sure what's going on here, but. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to know what what treaties we're working with, because I, I would like to know, do the existing treaties address protecting uh, cultural resources? Yeah, but they're just lost, lost to uh, history and not being implemented. Okay. Great. Love it. Would either or both of you be comfortable giving a brief report out to the task force on the 15th? Just doing initial facilitation planning right now. <laughs> sure, I don't mind. They can also watch the recording too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're going to generate some high level notes. <clears throat> okay. Um, no public in attendance. So no public comment right now. Camille, Sean, Tessa, how are you feeling? Anything you need? Um, any guidance, more guidance from Emily and Lawrence? Well, I'm just, I'm hearing from <clears throat> Lawrence that this mapping is really important and then the piece about the treaties. So I'm just wondering if if we can somehow model, you know, making a formal research request and how we want to process that. So whether that's in this um, subcommittee or if we want to bring that to a full task force. And we, um, yeah, we haven't exactly worked through that all the way to actually implementing research with the task force yet. So just wanted to note that and for to potentially discuss here or after. My, well, maybe I should not share my thoughts first. If Sean or Camille, you've got more insight on that. 
say something, Sean. I think, um, Tessa, we should we should talk about that. I, I think um, that that is, sort of staff can do the research that's required to support the task force and its needs. Um, I don't think we need sort of formal uh, formal ask right now in this space, but let's talk about that. And I guess let's say if we if we do or if we did, we would come back to you, subcommittee members, and then to the full task force as needed as required to confirm um, what the plans were. Right, Sean, so, yeah. do you want to jump in? I was just going to say, I think when you mentioned for Emily that today was just a, a dialogue, and I think it was much more than that, and that's. Back to your earlier point about the importance of understanding the issues. And we started today with just a list of topics. And I think this discussion has been, for me anyway, really helpful in terms of better understanding the specifics of the issues and again, your goals, which then enables us to start thinking about what recommendations could look like. But I'm just, just want to again, be clear that that's sort of a, you know, our like our role and your role, and we're clear about who's doing what. And uh, but yeah, I think this was a really valuable discussion, primarily as I said, for helping to us at least start to better understand some of these issues, so that we can think about parts forward and what they'd be look like. But making sure that whatever we'd be proposing in form of a recommendation actually aligns with the the core of the issue. So thank you. Agreed. Okay. Um, if you're interested, next Tuesday, Grants and Resources Subcommittee meets, and then the following Tuesday, Community Outreach Subcommittee meets. Um, I know, Emily, you're, you're on another task force subcommittee. Task force, you're on another subcommittee as well. And then we've got our regular task force meeting, which is August 14th and 15th in Fresno. Um, after we click off, Emily Lawrence, I'm going to ping both of you and um, just ask for your preferred travel plans, because we're going to start some bookings for the Fresno meeting. Otherwise, I think that was that was productive. Sometimes it feels like you're muddling through, but then you go back and you really reflect on all the things that were shared. And there's a lot of stuff there that was shared, just as Sean was mentioning. So I'm so happy that you both made it this morning. And we're able to contribute your ideas and thoughts. And I really look forward to advancing this, this topic with you all. And next time we'll get Darlene, hopefully. I want to echo that. I really appreciate the conversation. So thanks both of you. And yeah, we have a lot to work with now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be will we be meeting before the in-person meeting to discuss? like what we're going to be presenting on or can you just let me know now i think we don't need to meet another I time i um happy to meet with with you to coordinate emily but it didn't feel like we were ready to meet in advance of august i think that staff's going to need a little bit more time especially since we're supporting um two more subcommittee meetings and then the august meeting um, so we'll need a little bit of time to do some research and pull together some maps, do some research on the treaties, um, start to kind of, you know, pull some narrative together. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, Camille and Tessa, but I feel like, um, and I'm glad we're clarifying this because I did skip past it, but I, I do feel like we should look to meet um, maybe late August or early September as the subcommittee. Right. Well, I was just asking if we were going to meet on what we're going to be presenting at our in-person meeting. Oh yeah. Um, do you think that there's a need to? I, I was I was envisioning it just as kind of a, a brief verbal report out of what we talked about today. But would you like to prepare? Would you like us to help prepare something, or would you would it be helpful to meet to coordinate in advance? No, I was just curious. <clears throat> okay. If you change your mind, we can coordinate that. Okay. Are we I, good? I was asking, what do you need me to share at the in-person meeting so I can prepare then? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I was not <laughs> tracking along. Um, I think it's just a very brief 
report out of what we talked about today. So I think you can let folks know that we started a conversation with goals and then explored a list of topics from prior meetings um, and really started to better understand the context related to things like um, protection of sacred sites, human remains, cultural artifacts during development, um, how do we acknowledge the history of the land during land transfer, legal framework, et cetera, et cetera. You know, just kind of verbally connect back to these ideas. Um, we can talk about how um, importantly um, the subcommittee wants to understand the treaties that are in existence, treaty rights, lack thereof. How does that fit within the legal framework? Um, how can you highlight and elevate government to government consultation um, that you're interested to do some further exploration there and perhaps revisit those guidelines or maybe connect the work of this task force back to work that's going on in other places such as the California Truth and Healing process, um, that there is interest, um, there's a lot of interest really in figuring it out how to decriminalize cultural burning and cultural practices as it relates to land access and land stewardship, and that there's some clear next steps that were um, identified for that particular um, suggestion. And one is to start with mapping out tribal lands and non-native lands and seeing where those lands um, are adjacent to private and federal and state lands because that will impact how cultural burns um, are, I think, viewed and permissible. Um, that, that you're interested to have some, or that staff will be doing some research on cultural burning and criminalization to get some um, answers so that we can better understand um, where folks were convicted and when and why, and how can we really assess the current law enforcement and what are the avenues for revising legislation so that it is not a criminal offense. And um, some possible ideas for recommendations percolated up, bubbled up through that conversation, like what what do what do various agencies such as Cal Fire how do they understand cultural burning? What science and research is needed on the effects of cultural burning, so that we can support its use and get support from state and federal agencies, connected back to that broader goal of decriminalizing it. And then might it be useful to develop training requirements for Cal Fire and cultural burning? So if um that was helpful, I I think just a verbal report out like that, highlighting your key discussion topics is really all that is needed on the 14th and 15th. And then we can let folks know that we plan to gather again in late summer, early fall after staff has um, had a little bit of time to do some work per the guidance of the subcommittee members. And then we'll continue to engage in these discussions and can invite others to listen in and or join the subcommittee as well. I could just add to Megan that if it's helpful, Emily, you will have the meeting summary at that point before the meeting, uh, before the August in-person meeting. So you could kind of use that as a guide and then we can also share these slides with you. They'll also be posted online. So um, those could be guides for your report back as well. Since you pulled it up I on the next steps, the maps I was talking about. Yeah. I was thinking more along the lines of um, not necessarily like tribal lands, but ancestral land, like tribal lands. Are we talking um, reservations and rancherias, which I wasn't, I was thinking, well, that would be interesting, but I was thinking more like just all of the, like the ancestral lands of the different tribes in California. And then, but I would like to see kind of an overlay of what's kind of overlaid on top of that, which includes reservations and rancherias, which would be small, but the the private lands on top of those ancestral lands, and then the other public lands on top as well. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. Okay. 
feeling good, feeling okay, feeling like we accomplished something. Yeah. Good. I mean, I feel, <laughs> I don't, um, I feel like this meeting, you know, is really intended to serve the staff. So I guess the goal of me educating or just sharing with staff, if that's, if, yeah, if that's an accomplishment, I'll take that. <laughs> Um, well, it's, it, yes, it is, it is educating staff, but it's also giving us um, guidelines and telling us what, how we can support you in achieving your goals. So helping to clarify your goals and letting us know how we can support you in that. So we can bring those back to you and have you review and let us know whether it reflects what your goals are as a member of the task force. But let's think about that. So when we when we come back together again, if there's a different way or a better improved way to structure our time together and our conversations so that we do feel like it, it's feeling a bit more productive and, and you come away from the conversation, Emily, feeling like we did accomplish some things, let's absolutely talk about that. But I, I know we've got some work to do now. And you said the in-person meeting is a two-day thing, right? So um, do you know when we'll be doing the updates? Which day? I think day two on the 15th. We're still working through agenda design, but it'll probably be on the second day. Okay. Okay. We're just at the top of the hour. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emily. Work. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, everyone. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I'll stop recording. Give me one second. Mm -hmm.